my channel and welcome if you're new here. Happy Monday. It is Monday, so it is meal prep day. I have three absolutely fantastic clean eating and delicious recipes for you. I have a breakfast, a lunch, and a sweet treat. It's a no-bake sweet treat, so you don't even have to warm up your house during the summer. So if you want to see what three recipes I have for you today, a little bit of fun along the way, just stay tuned. this week we're making vanilla almond overnight quinoa how fun so a spin on overnight oats using oats and quinoa this is going to be so delicious as the weather is warming up it's going to be a perfect breakfast so let me show you what you'll need for these vanilla almond overnight quinoa first of course you'll need some quinoa some rolled oats always recommend that you buy your oats organic because they're heavily sprayed with glycosate which is the active ingredient in roundup so if you can score your oats over your oats organic that's better than conventional thrive has a fantastic price on oats as well as all of these other amazing organic products i'll link thrive market down below for you guys you actually get 20 dollars worth of free groceries when you join the market highly Highly recommend. A lot of what you're going to see comes directly from Thrive. You'll also need chia seeds, almond milk of your choice, whatever type of container you want to store your overnight quinoa in to eat the next day, some maple syrup. Of course, I have the Thrive Organic. This is a killer price on Thrive. Almond extract, vanilla extract, and then almonds. So I'm just using these slivered almonds from Nutstop. These are just traditional slivered almonds, not roasted, not salted. I do have 10% off and free shipping at Nutstop as well. I'll link that down below for you guys. So let's make some breakfast. So the first thing we're going to need is quinoa. So I have one half of a cup of raw quinoa with one cup of water. I did not cook my quinoa in chicken broth just because this is kind of a sweet breakfast. So I didn't want to cook it in a broth. So I just have one cup of water. This should make one cup of cooked quinoa. So it should about double in size during the cooking process. So I have that started. So our quinoa is cooked. So we have one cup of cooked quinoa here. So this is very, very simple. We're actually going to combine all of our ingredients with the exception of any toppings that we want to add to this into a bowl before we divide that into our four jars. So let's go ahead and start with one cup of rolled oats. We're going to add two cups of almond milk that's going to give us the liquid to make these into somewhat of an overnight oat we're also going to add in the entire cup of cooked quinoa so that and then we're going to give it a stir like a preliminary stir to make sure those oats quinoa and almond milk get mixed together really really well the almond milk is going to immediately start to kind of soak into the oats as well then let's add the rest of our ingredients. So I have two tablespoons of the slivered almonds. I have two tablespoons of chia seeds. Now these will also be, come a little bit gelatinous as well and thicken up with the overnight process. And then I have two tablespoons of maple syrup. And I just measured it out on my food scale. I find like with a liquid like maple syrup, it's just much easier or honey or any of those to measure it out on your food scale than trying to dig it out of a tablespoon so that for me works really really well i'm going to give this kind of a quick stir i just want to get everything nice and combined and then i'm going to go ahead and add in some almond extract and i want about a half of a teaspoon we want to be very careful with extracts because they're very very potent and then we want to add in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract as well and then we're going to give this another big stir and now really you guys we're ready to get these into our jars so we're going to divide this out into four equal servings get these in a jar and get them in the refrigerator and by tomorrow morning we will have perfect overnight vanilla quinoa oats so i'm going to start with about a half of a cup per jar and then we'll kind of 
divide it out as equal as possible. So I'm gonna give it another just quick stir. It's already starting to thicken up a little bit. I have a half of a cup here, so I'm just going to dig in, grab out a half of a cup and add it here to my jar. And then I'm just going to repeat that in all four jars and we'll just keep going until we've used all of the liquid. there are our overnight vanilla quinoa oats. So that is quite a bit in there. It's going to be very filling and delicious. So what we'll do when we go to eat it is you can go ahead and top it with whatever toppings you want. I'm probably going to do some fruit of some sort, maybe some blueberries or strawberries for zero points. I might do a little bit of whipped topping for zero points, but I'm going to keep whatever toppings I put on these at zero points just to keep the points fairly low. So how these work out point wise is you made four servings total. It is seven smart points per serving on the blue and green plan, but it is only two points per serving on the purple plan because you don't count quinoa or oats. But this is a very well-rounded breakfast. You could throw an egg in for an additional zero smart points and you have a perfect breakfast. And seven smart points for a hearty, delicious breakfast is not bad. So I'm gonna get the lids on these, we'll throw these in the fridge, and let's make some lunch. this week I'm going to be making an orange sesame chicken bowl what's great about this recipe is we're going to make six servings but we're going to set aside two servings for next week and we're gonna use this same recipe as part of next week's meal prep so this is kind of a two-for-one recipe which is awesome so let me show you what's in this week's and next week's lunch first you're going to need some rice of your choice I love the thrive sprouted brown rice it is amazing so i'm going to be using that soy sauce or coconut aminos whatever your preference is sesame oil about a pound or so of chicken also some sweet potatoes we want the total of one large sweet potato i have these really small ones so i'm just going to weigh out on my food scale the equivalent of the grams of one large sweet potato you're also going to need some broccoli and an orange for the zest and the juice so let's get started on lunch so the first thing we're going to do is make a marinade i went ahead and put my chicken here in a ziploc bag in this small bowl we're actually going to put about three tablespoons of the orange juice and i went ahead and just juiced that fresh orange here and then i also zested it because we're going to need some zest a little bit later as well that way we don't have to count the points if we were to use regular bottled orange juice we would have to count the points so this saves us from doing that I have one tablespoon of my coconut aminos or soy sauce, and I have one tablespoon of sesame oil. So we're gonna go ahead and mix all of that together, and then we're gonna pour that here in this bag of chicken, and that's gonna go in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes while we make our rice and do a few more steps of our lunch. So let's go ahead and add our marinade to our chicken. And 30 minutes or so is pretty darn good for a marinade in the refrigerator. So I'm going to get this sealed up. What I like to do is seal it most of the way. And then I push and release the air. And then I'm going to give it kind of a massage because I want to get that marinade kind of into that chicken. And then again, I'm going to toss this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. On my food scale, I have my saucepan. I'm going to weigh out seven ounces of brown rice and then i'm going to go ahead and add about 14 ounces of water and we're going to get this rice cooking that way our rice is cooked and cooled before we make up our bowl so that is exactly seven ounces of the brown rice so now we're going to make the sauce so actually what we're reserving for next week is the some of the sauce so this is going to be the orange sesame chicken sauce so in my bowl here i have one eighth of a cup i measured it out on my food scale of organic raw honey to that i'm going to add two cloves of garlic or two the amount of two cloves of minced garlic i'm also going to add one quarter cup of coconut aminos or soy sauce 
we're going to add the remainder of our fresh squeezed orange juice now I would recommend actually squeezing two oranges because I don't quite have one cup and that's what the recipe calls for so I would recommend maybe doing two oranges zest one but squeeze two and it's not going to affect the points at all so I think you'll get a little bit more orange juice here in the sauce and then we're gonna go ahead and add some ground or minced ginger we want about two teaspoons of peeled or grated so I'm gonna go ahead and put in about two teaspoons here of my ginger paste I really like this stuff it lasts forever in the refrigerator and I don't have time to cut up great whatever real ginger so this works really really well and then I need some sesame oil I want about two tablespoons of sesame oil so I always, always measure out either on my food scale or in a measuring spoon oil because oil does have a lot of points. So we want to make sure that we're not overdoing it on the oil. And then I'm also going to add in all of this orange zest because I want this very orangey. And because I was lacking a bit on the actual orange juice, I'm going to make up for it here with the orange zest. It wanted about one and a half tablespoons of orange zest. I probably did about a quarter of a cup of orange zest which is just fine with me and then last we're going to take some tapioca starch and we want about a tablespoon of tapioca starch and we're going to mix that in with one half of a cup of water and that's actually going to give us a slurry that we're going to use to thicken our sauce so we just want to give it a nice stir until that tapioca starch is dissolved and then we're going to go ahead and add that here into our sauce and then we're going to go ahead and add that slurry type of thing into our sauce and then give it a, another stir. Now we're gonna throw this in a saucepan and on the stove, and that's what's gonna really help to thicken this up, but this looks and smells really delicious. So we've got our rice cooking. I went ahead and reduced the heat and popped the lid on it. So that's going to take about 20 minutes or so to cook. So we're gonna let that just do its thing while we do the rest of the sauce. So in my pan here, I have the sauce. I'm going to turn this on to a medium heat and we're gonna let this just warm up, start to come to a really low boil, keep stirring it until it's nice and thick and then remove it from the heat. So I went ahead and weighed out my sweet potatoes to the equivalent of one large, which are these four very small sweet potatoes. I gave them a quick wash. I'm going to leave the skin on. I don't mind the skin when I'm roasting potatoes and we're actually gonna roast these up with the broccoli. So I'm gonna leave the skin on and I'm just going to dice these into small enough pieces that they'll roast relatively quickly because we're gonna mix these up with the broccoli on a sheet pan. So that's about the size of the pieces of the potato. And then we'll get these chopped up and then we'll get that sheet pan out and get these into the oven as well. So I'm gonna grab out two just kind of quarter sheet pans. I like to use these for roasting. And on one of those, I added some parchment paper. I'm gonna go ahead and add on my sweet potatoes in a single layer. That's just going to help them roast a little bit easier. I'm gonna spray them with just the tiniest bit of nonstick cooking spray, and then add a little bit of salt and pepper. I have my oven preheating to 375 degrees. Now let's get the sheet pan going for the broccoli. What a wonderful world chicken going so I pulled it out of the refrigerator I'm gonna go ahead and just pop the pieces directly here on a sheet pan now the recipe says to sear it on the stove first I'm not going to do that you can certainly do that part it is in the original recipe but I'm just gonna go ahead and get my chicken baking in the oven 
Look at our sauce. Yum, it's so thick. I'm so excited for this. So we want to put a little bit of sauce over the chicken. So we're going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon of the sauce over each piece of our chicken. And then this is going to go in the oven right along with our potatoes and broccoli. And we're going to let this cook until the chicken is cooked completely through. But yum and pulled out a really small jar here. We're going to reserve about a half of a cup of this yummy thick sauce for next week's recipe. This is so great, you guys, that we're actually going to get the basis of a couple of meals out of this. So there's about a half of a cup of the sauce. I'm gonna let it cool, pop a lid on, and I'm just gonna throw this into the refrigerator. Now we're also going to reserve half of this chicken for next week as well. So that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the fridge. So while the chicken, veggies, sweet potatoes are cooking, my rice is done. So I want five bowls total. We are not reserving any rice. So I'm gonna start with about a quarter cup of cooked sprouted brown rice in each bowl. And then I bet you I'm gonna have more about a half of a cup per bowl, but I'm gonna start with a quarter cup and we'll just go back and we'll add another quarter cup until all of our rice is gone. And then that way this has a chance to cool a bit before we add the veggies and chicken on top. So there's a quarter of a cup per container and I still have all this left. So it's definitely going to be about a half of a cup of cooked rice per bowl. So here's our cooked rice. Again, we have about a half of a cup per bowl. I'm just gonna let this cool. And in the meantime, let's divide out our sauce so that we have that ready to go as well. So I have five of my reusable to-go containers with lids, and I'm just gonna go ahead and divide this sauce evenly into these containers. I'm gonna start with a couple of spoonfuls per container, and again, we'll just keep going until we're out of sauce completely. And that gives the sauce and the rice a little bit of a chance to cool before we pull out the sweet potatoes, the broccoli, and the chicken. All right, so we ended up with about three spoonfuls of sauce. You guys, it's a lot of sauce. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a lid on these, set these aside, and as soon as our stuff is out of the oven, we'll put together the rest of these chicken bowls. All right, I just pulled out the broccoli. This looks so good, it's nice and roasted. So what I'm going to do is just divide it equally. Broccoli is zero point, so I'm just going to do my best to kind of divide it equally amongst all of the bowls. And again, we'll set this aside, let it cool. The potatoes are just about done, and then last is the chicken. All right, I just grabbed out the sweet potatoes, so we're gonna divide these evenly amongst our bowls as well. These are looking so good, you guys. So I'm just gonna pop in a few of the sweet potatoes, and again, I'll go back and add more if I have enough, but this is already looking delish. All right, I just pulled out the chicken. This looks amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool for just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna set aside probably a large and a small chicken breast because we do want to reserve two of these for next week. So we have our sauce reserved, half a cup of that, and half of our chicken for next week's meal prep. It's going to be so easy, you guys. I'm really excited about this kind of two-for-one deal. And then I'm going to chop up this large breast and this breast, and that is what we're going to actually go ahead and top this week's bowl with. <laughs> chicken is cut up. This is a lot of chicken and we still have two of the chicken breasts reserved. I'll show those to you guys. So I just stuck them in a little Tupperware. I'm going to let them cool completely to avoid the condensation. Pop a lid on this. It'll go in the fridge for next week. I may actually, you know what? I'm actually going to put this in the freezer because it is going to be sitting for an entire week. So I'll go ahead and put these couple of chicken breasts into the freezer. So to do our bowls, again, we're just going to divide our chicken equally among our bowls. So I'm going to start with just about, I would say maybe just shy of half of a cup of chicken per bowl. And we'll just add this until our chicken is gone. And the chicken of this is zero points, but we still wanna be as even as possible. So we're getting the same amount of protein-ish per day. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll be back to show you our completed bowl and we'll go over all of the smart points. All right, look at this. You guys, this looks so good whole, clean, real food, hearty. We've got our potatoes, we've got some broccoli, some chicken, some brown rice, 
sprouted, which is really the best rice. So I wanna walk you guys through our bowl. So we reserved one half of a cup of the sauce and we reserved two of the four chicken breasts. So what was left, all the broccoli, the potatoes, the rice, the remainder of the sauce and the remainder of the chicken, we went ahead and divided into five servings. So how this breaks down point wise is this entire bowl, including the sauce, the rice, everything is eight smart points on the blue plan. 10 points on the green plan because you have to account for the chicken, but only three points on the purple plan. Now, if you're trying to save some points, you can make one quick, easy substitution, and that is you can substitute the real honey that we use for the Nature's Hollow Sugar-Free Honey. I'll insert a picture here for you guys. You can pick that up off of Nutrition. The link for Nutrition is down in the description box. So if you make that substitution, you're going to basically be saving two smart points per serving. So this bowl will be six points on blue, eight points on green, and only one point on purple. And that is just subbing out that regular honey for sugar-free honey. But I like the regular honey. I'll take the eight points because how good is this, you guys? And then you can just add a little bit of fruit and you have a very filling, satisfying, clean lunch. <music> treat this week we're going to be making no bake cranberry apple oat bars you guys this is a homemade granola bar that you don't even have to bake i've heard that these are outstanding i cannot wait for these so let me show you what's in our recipe and then we're quickly going to put this together and let it cool and we have some granola bars for the week you're going to need some rolled oats again these are the organic rolled oats from the thrive market you'll also need some whole flax seed and some ground flaxseed. Now, if you only have whole on hand, you can run this through your coffee grinder and make your own ground flaxseed. So whatever you have on hand, just use what you have. But I actually have both, so I'm gonna do some whole and some ground. You're going to need some nut butter of your choice. I really like this Trader Joe's creamy salted peanut butter when I'm doing any type of baking or recipe. Of course, some cinnamon, some dried apples. So these are from Trader Joe's and these are literally, you guys, they're just dried apples. All that's in here is apples. So I actually count these as zero smart points. You're also going to need some cranberries. I have these whole cranberries from the Patience Fruit Company. These are also off of the Thrive Market. These are so delicious. They're sweetened with apple juice. So great ingredients in those. And then you'll need some almonds and these are those same almonds we used for breakfast from Nutstop. And again, the link for Nutstop and 10% off is in the description box so let's make these granola bars so let's make our bars so you're gonna need a pretty good sized bowl because we're combining all of our ingredients into one bowl and this is a lot of ingredients so first I have two and a half cups of rolled oats so we're gonna go ahead and add those now I did forget to show you guys honey you are going to need some honey speaking of that we have half of a cup of honey so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So I forgot to show you guys that in the beginning, so I apologize. Once you add in your honey, we're gonna put in two tablespoons of whole flax seed. And then we're going to put in actually one third cup of the ground flax seed. I went ahead and took 20 of those dried apples and you can see I just cut them into smaller pieces and I did account for 20 of those in the recipe even though they are zero smart points I limited myself to 20 and then I have my cranberries I went ahead and cut these in half as well just because these patience ones they're big cranberries so they're you know they're pretty good size so I went ahead and just chopped those in half to try to disperse them a little more evenly in the bars You'll need one half of a cup of nut of your choice. I'm just using those slivered almonds. Of course, we're gonna add in some cinnamon and I'm gonna put in a lot of cinnamon because I love it. And I think with these flavor combinations, cinnamon is just going to bring it all together. So I'd say that I'm probably putting in a tablespoon of cinnamon into the mix. And then lastly, on my food scale, I measured out one cup of the Trader Joe's creamy salted peanut butter. Now you can use any nut butter that you want. In fact, you could use PB2 in place of the peanut butter and that would really cut down on the points if you made peanut butter out of pb2 you'll just have to input the ingredients into the recipe builder if that's something you're interested in you know cutting down the points a lot by eliminating the peanut butter but i'm fine taking the points i love real peanut butter it keeps me full it's a great source of healthy fat so 
whatever you prefer to do with this recipe as far as the peanut butter goes. But now we're gonna give this a mix and we're gonna have kind of a crumbly, wet-ish dough when it's all said and done. All right, we are all mixed. Look at that, yum. Very simple into an eight by eight baking dish. I went ahead and added a little water here to this measuring cup. We want our hands to be wet when we are doing this. And we're just going to take this mixture, put this into our baking dish. And this is a lot, you guys. These are gonna be some thick bars, super thick, thick bars. And then we're gonna take our wet hands and your hands need to be wet so that it doesn't stick because the peanut butter likes to stick to our hands. So we're just gonna push this down as evenly as we can. Look at how thick these are going to be. That is crazy. Now this recipe makes 24 bars, but they are going to be thick bars. So these, what a fantastic, delicious dessert item. So I'm gonna add just a little more water here to my hands and I'm giving it you guys quite a bit of pressure just trying to make it compacted so that it actually forms a bar when it's cooled and what we're going to do is throw this into our refrigerator for a three to four hours or until our bars are hardened and that way we're able to cut these into the square the bar shape Oh my goodness, I am super excited. My husband is even going to love these because there's no chocolate in them, but look at that, yum. So I'm gonna get this covered and into the refrigerator. All right, I took the bars out. Look how good these look. So I went ahead and cut this side into the right serving size. You can see this side I left bigger. Those are gonna be for my husband. That way he has basically a bigger granola bar since he doesn't track his points. And then this is the size of the granola bar for us. And that is cutting these into 24 bars. You guys, look how thick that is. We're talking real peanut butter, oats, honey, all the good things, nuts, all healthy fats, lots of protein, keep you nice and full. So by cutting these bars into 24 servings, they work out to be five smart points per bar on both the blue and green plan and three smart points per bar on the purple plan. So basically you're having a homemade granola bar for five points, which is less than store-bought processed granola bars. So I'm so excited about these. I'm hoping to have some left over to take camping, but highly recommend this recipe. Of course, this recipe will be on my website. So I think I'm gonna enjoy a five smart point snack. this week's snacks. I have a new absolutely phenomenal food find for you guys. So let me show you kind of what I have for snacks. Now I don't eat all of these every day. I just like to have some options whether I'm wanting sweet or savory. So the first thing I do have always each week on hand are Bilt Bars. So this is the peanut butter Bilt Bar. All of the nut based bars with the exception of the coconut almond are four smart points. They are however chock full of protein, fat, and fiber, so they keep you incredibly full. Like I've mentioned, whenever I need a snack to sustain me long-term, if I'm out and about, or if I'm gonna do a workout, I generally will go for the nut-based built Bars just because they keep me a little bit fuller longer, and I'll gladly take that extra point to keep myself a little more full. If you are wanting a three-point bar, they have so many three-point bars that are absolutely delicious, and they still pack quite a bit of protein, fat, and fiber as well and you can basically save yourself a point. Now this one literally tastes like an Almond Joy. It's amazing, it's actually, this one and Mint Brownie Delight are my favorite three point bars. And I love the peanut butter and peanut butter brownie for the four point bars. So those are kind of my go-tos. I do have 10% off for Built Bar. I'll put that code here on the screen for you. If you've actually never ordered from Built Bar, I have a special link down below where you can get $10 off of your first order instead of 10% off of your first order. But save this 10% off code because you can use it over and over again. So don't miss out on Built Bar, you guys. Total game changer on WW. This is the new food find. This is the Kite Hill Dip in Ranch. This is actually dairy free. I got this on a reduced price because it expires here, I think today or tomorrow. Oh my goodness, you guys. This tastes like traditional ranch dip, but you can have two tablespoons of this dip for one smart point that's it you guys it has fabulous fabulous ingredients again it is dairy free here it says kind of 
So it's dairy-free, soy-free, gluten-free, non-GMO, vegan, no artificial flavors or preservatives, made from live cultures, and it's kosher. It's so freaking delicious. I love it. I've dipped chips in it, but this week, I'm going to eat this up before it expires, and I did pick up these organic, no, it says somewhere on here. There we go. Organic Persian cucumbers from Trader Joe's, and then I also have their tricolored carrots, and I'm going to up my veggie game by dipping those in this dip because, you guys, let me just tell you how incredible, incredible this dip is. The veggies are zero points, so I can have four tablespoons of this dip for two points. This would be great as a condiment on a sandwich or a wrap. I'm not even kidding, you guys. I'm so incredibly in love with this. I'll be definitely definitely repurchasing i did find it in the health food or natural section of my grocery store highly recommend so i've got veggies and dip i have my built bar and lastly if i want something sweet and minty you guys know i love these little bee brownie thins these are the chocolate mint these are actually paleo they are five smart points for a serving and a serving of them is a lot you get quite a lot i'll generally have about half of a serving and i feel like that's just enough to satisfy that sweet and that crunch they are thin and crispy like the corners of a brownie they're all organic they have fabulous perfect perfect ingredients they're yummy the chocolate mint is by far my very favorite i do buy these off of the thrive market and again the link for thrive is down below and you do get the 20 dollars worth of free products when you join thrive for a year so highly recommend you guys know i show a lot of thrive products and that way you're able to kind of duplicate my recipes and pick up my favorite thrive things so i have brownie thins i have built bars and i have veggies in this amazing dip for snacks for the week thank you for joining me on this week's meal prep these three recipes are killer. I'll make sure these recipes are on my website. The website is down in the description box below. Also in the description box, you'll find the link to all of my favorite things, all the discount codes that I can offer you, and the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We'd love, love, love to have you be part of our community over there. So come on over and join us. Speaking of community, if you're new or you're not subscribed, just hit that little subscribe button and that little bell located right next to it and you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded you don't want to miss out give this one a thumbs up if you're here for the meal prep and all these delicious recipes and of course i hope you guys have a fantastic monday let's make this a great week and i'll see you guys in my next video bye